Hi there, my name's Daniel and I work for Bitania. This is part two of two guides on how to install Pterodactyl on Ubuntu 20.04 and how to start a Rust server on Pterodactyl. On our previous video, we actually installed Pterodactyl and we set up our node so that we have a server to work from. Today, all we're gonna do is head into the node, head over to allocations, and this is where we assign the IP and the ports that the service will be using. We'll head over to our end user panel, copy our IP, pop it into IP addresses, IP alias, and the ports are 28015, 28016, 28082. 28015 is the Rust connection port and is UDP, 28016 is Archon on TCP, and 28082 is Rust Plus, also TCP. We'll hit submit, head over to servers, create new, and we'll start filling in the details from top down. The server name as it appears on Pterodactyl, not as it appears in game. The server owner. And a description should you want to put one. Our allocation management will select the node that we set up. The default allocation would be the port that you want people to be able to connect to the server on. We'll choose 28015. Our additional allocations would be 28016 and 28082. We're not setting any databases for this server or changing any of the allocation limits. However, we will enable the ability to set five backups. The resource management for the service. The CPU limit is done in percentage rather than per core. So one would equals 100, two cores would be 200, three would be 300 and so on and so forth. We're going to set this to zero so that we can utilize all cores. The CPU pinning is basically specifying the CPU threads that this process can run on, i.e. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. We're going to leave this as empty as we don't want to pin the service to any specific core or thread. The memory is done in megabytes, or you can set zero for unlimited. We'll set zero. Disk space is also done in megabytes, and we will set zero as well. We don't have swap enabled, so we will leave that at zero and block IO weight and enable OOM killer will remain default. One thing to mention, if you are going to be running multiple servers on this specific node or dedicated server, you may want to utilize CPU limiting and CPU pinning to make sure that you're not utilizing the entire resource on one server. We'll head over to nest configuration and choose Rust. Now we have our startup configuration for the startup commands as well as the service variables. This is how it will appear in game and the experience the players have. Server name, Bitania Rust server. Oxide mod is gonna be left as zero to disable. We're not gonna be making a guide on this. However, there are written guides that you can find on the Bitania support articles. We may make one in the future, but as of right now, not in this one. Level will be procedural map, description, Hello. This is the description that appears when people click on your actual server in Rust. I'll show an example quickly using Reddit. So you have the header image, we will be defining that shortly, the server name which we've already defined, and this is the description. You can set new lines using slash n, or go down twice by utilizing it again. We're just going to leave it as hello for now. We also have the ability to set a URL, which is the button view web page. For now, we'll set that to Bitania. World size, we're going to set to 1000. And we're just going to quickly grab the smallest map that we can find from rustmaps.com. Pop that in the world seed. Set the max players to 1. And here we can define the server image. This can be in PNG or JPEG format. At 512 by 256. We won't be defining one just yet. Archon port will be set at 28016. Archon password will be left as change me, but please do set your own password and make sure that it is secure. Save interval. We'll be changing this from a low 60 to 600. So every 10 minutes rather than every 60 seconds, the server will auto save. The reason why is if you have a lot of people on your server, you have some very intensive uh, plugins. Every 60 seconds, your server will try to save and cause lag for your players set this appropriately. 
Additional arguments will be leaving empty. However, you can find additional arguments that we'd like to apply via the Steam information. App port will be leaving at 28082. Server logo. This is the logo that is 50 by 50 and appears in the Rust Plus uh, app. We'll be leaving it empty for now though. And the custom map URL, should we want to put one, we can put here as long as there's a downloadable link to a file, either via Discord, GitHub, Dropbox or anywhere else that just allows you to download it. We'll hit create server. We'll hit the little arrow. And now our server is installing. Once this is happening, we'll define some ports in our UFW on Ubuntu. UFW allow 20.015 slash UDP. This just allows us to define the filters and the firewall rules on the dedicated server so that people can actually connect. UFW allow 20.016 slash TCP. UFW allow 20.082 slash TCP. UFW reload. There we go, all done. So we've just allowed 28015 on UDP, 28016 on TCP, and 28082 on TCP. You have W status. And as we can see, they're there. Right now, we're just going to wait for this to finish installing and starting up. So for now, I'll be muted. Whilst our server is in the final stages of actually starting up, we'll go through the navigation options that we have access to on the top. We'll start by the console. So here you can see all of the actions that the server is taking from the boot. This is effectively an Archon system because you can run commands for your server here as well. You have the address, the uptime. Once it's done actually starting, it will display in seconds, minutes, days, and hours how long your server has been running for the CPU load that the server is utilizing, the memory, the disk, and the network traffic in and out. And you also have these graphs at the bottom as well, as well as the start, restart, stop. Once you have clicked stop, if your server does not stop automatically, you can uh, click a button which replaces stop with kill. We also have our files. So this is the server's file structure for the Rust server itself. 
and should you want to add umod or oxide plugins later on you will probably be utilizing the file system quite regularly as you will have to edit the configs for all of your plugins as well as once the server is fully booted in the server rust and config folder there will be three new files server auto bands and users and this is controlling the owner id and the moderator id any bands that you have in your server and the startup uh, configurations in the startup configuration you can find things such as whether there's heli spawns on the map how many deer can spawn how many animals and things like that we have databases associated with the server if you have set any we have not you also have the ability to set schedules based on cron jobs a name the timers the cheat sheet for it should you actually need it if you're not too familiar with cron jobs when the server is online and whether it's enabled we have users which allows us to define a user that can also manage the service and change the permissions so that they can only access certain things or whether they can access everything we have the backup system should we want to take a full backup of the rust server we would set the name any files and folders and directories that are ignored and whether the down, uh, the the backup can be deleted or is undeletable we have our network tab which is showing our ip and our port as primary secondary and our third one the startup commands that we set originally can also be modified from the startup tab including a toggle option for oxide being on or off the only thing that can't be modified from here is the archon port and the app port these still need to be edited from the admin part of the startup command right here archon port app port and then once you've changed those hit save please bear in mind that if you do change the ports that your rust server is utilizing you will have to make sure that they are allocated properly on the node and in the server under build configuration they have been allocated correctly here by assigning and removing the old ports you also have settings which allows you to connect to the sftp for your server so i will open that for an example and log into it and this basically just allows us to access the sftp for the server and upload and download files and folders this way you can also change the server's name this isn't the name that appears in game but is a name that appears in the pterodactyl server list we can also reinstall our server from here and we also have the new 1.9 pterodactyl update for activity logging if you do have multiple users on your pterodactyl panel you can check to see what they are doing to your server from this panel itself we'll head back over to console and see if the server is done oh and it is so our uptime is now updated five minutes we'll run a quick server info command currently one player maximum with no joining i will click where it says address and it will copy it to the clipboard head over to rust type in connect and then Control v to paste and we're now joining the server so the new update from rust sends out a ping warning for any servers that are utilizing uh, racknet server v2 and store source server queries from path.net the filters it's something that can be ignored but it does mean that your players if they're joining from a different region will see this warning we'll head back over to the panel and run the server info again and we'll see that now one person is joining so all we're going to do is wait for it to actually join me in nearly there and there we are we're in game and there we go Bitania Rust 
we'll head back over to the panel and as we can see I joined and I said something in chat and that's pretty much it that's how you make a Rust server below this video guide in the support article will be a in-depth explanation on how to apply the edge firewall filters and rules for path.net unfortunately we won't be covering that in this guide if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to us via a billing ticket or by live chat or even on our discord server have a good day